decorate the super easy and cute Buffalo Check Ruffle Tea Towel. You're gonna need some tea towels. I get these five packs at Walmart. They're about $5 and so it's like a dollar a tea towel. And then you're gonna need some Buffalo Check fabric. I get mine at Hobby Lobby or whatever fabric you wanna use. So once you have that, you're gonna need to double the length of your tea towel. So once you, you wanna iron it really well and starch it really well, once you iron it out and measure it, that is the length that you're gonna need. So this tea towel, once I measured, once I ironed it and measured it was 30 inches. So I wanna double the size of that. So that would make my, the length of my fabric for the ruffle 60 inches. So if you're working with a 20 inch tea towel, you're gonna to wanna to have 40 inches of fabric for the ruffle. If you're, you know, so just double whatever the amount of the width of the uh, tea towel is. And then the width of your fabric is gonna be five inches. So this is 60 inches by five inches. So if you're dealing again with a 20 inch uh, tea towel, you would do 40 and then five inches. So once you have your fabric cut down, we're gonna create a ruffle. You can do this with uh, making a gathering stitch or using the sewing machine. And the sewing machine is what we're gonna use. So I'm gonna show you how I do that now. So a seam if you'd like for the bottom of your ruffle but I like a nice little frayed look. I just think it gives it a nice torn look. So when you're gonna to, um, do that, you're just gonna find a piece of thread. You're just gonna pull that thread very gently until it kind of gets tight. And then you're just gonna keep finding little pieces. And that's gonna fray your bottom of your thread. Um, I just find that's the easiest way to do it. And then just keep finding pieces. If you can't find a piece, you can use like a, your um, seam ripper but that helps get that nice frayed edge. And then I'll just trim all the extra, extra thread. So I'm just gonna pull that first to create that frayed edge. And then we are going to add a, um, do a seam on the ends here. So I'm gonna first fringe this Keep pulling thread around the edge until you get that desired look of that fringed and frayed look. So as you can see, mine is all done there. So, and it's, like I said, it's one less thing you have to then worry about sewing. Uh, so once I kind of go through and I pull my string or my thread, just like that, a seam ripper works really well. So now I have that all frayed. So now I know what my bottom is. So you're gonna fold it in about a quarter inch or so. Give it a finger press and fold it over again. And then secure it in place with a pin just like so. And then we're gonna give it a quick stitch. So get it under your sewing machine. Don't forget to back stitch. And then don't forget to back stitch again. Right, and then needle up, pull up your presser foot, and then I'd like to trim this so we have some nice long tails when we begin to do our um, gather or basting stitch. So now once we have our ends sewn together, make sure that they're correct, that you didn't flip them by accident. So now you have both ends. So now we know the bottom is our ruffled side so we're gonna be doing some gathering stitches up here on the top. And this is so easy, you can do it by hand, um, but the sewing machine just makes it a little bit quicker. And you might even get lucky that it's actually gonna help you gather the stitches too. So on my sewing machine, I'm gonna stick my fabric under. I already have some nice long tails with my bobbin thread and my top thread. You can trim some extras off just so they don't get stuck in your um, feed dogs. I always get worried about that. So if there's any trimming you can do. So then the main thing is, is you're just gonna start sewing. You're not going to back stitch or anything, but the most important thing is to increase your stitch level. So I go up to a five on mine. Uh, some sewing machines have that basting or gathering stitch. So, but I go up to five and then I just start sewing. And as you can see, already kind of ruffling for me and just don't pull just kind of guide it 
I let the sewing machine do the work. And as you can see, it's already ruffling. And we're gonna do maybe another row, because it's always good to have a backup, because as you're gathering, if your stitch breaks and that thread breaks, and you only have one row, then you kind of have to start all over. So by doing two or even three rows sometimes, as you're gathering, you have a backup. <laughs> I don't put all my money on one, one row of stitches. But you can see how it's gathering really nicely. And then you're just gonna go right, run it right off your sewing machine, needle up, pull out so you have some nice long threads to gather with. So I kind of go in between. And you can see how it kind of already started doing a ruffle for me just in one row. But like I said, I'm not gonna put all my money on one row. I'm gonna go right back under. And I did about, the first one I did was about a quarter inch of a, a quarter inch. Now I'm gonna actually put my presser foot on that stitch and go about a half inch. So I went about a fourth of an inch. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go about a half an inch. The most important thing is don't back stitch and also to don't run into your other stitch or they're gonna sew. So we're now we're gonna do another row of stitches and just begin and make sure you don't get into the other stitches and just let the sewing machine do its work. But this the second row takes a little bit more guidance because you don't want getting to the end of the second row of stitches and just go off, lift up your needle, pull out your threads, leave some length. And now we have two rows of gathering stitches. And now you're gonna either wanna find your top stitches or your bottom stitches. You do not wanna pull on both. If you pull on both, you're gonna create a knot. So you kinda carefully, sometimes you can use your um, seam ripper to find your threads, because sometimes they get kind of tangled here. And then once you find your row, you're just gonna gently start pulling, and that's gonna create your ruffle. You're gonna wanna know, like, look at how, this was 60 inches, which seemed quite long at the beginning. So what I'm gonna do, actually, is I'm gonna lay out my tea towel and see how much ruffle I need to create, because I might need, not need to do very much, or I might actually need to expand it. So let's take a look back at the uh, tea towel. So I'm back at the tea towel, I've laid it out flat, and I'm actually thinking that I'm going to need to separate this a little bit more and kind of move my stitches out opposed to in um, to create the ruffle that I need. So it's actually two bunched up. So I might have been able to get away with just one row. Uh, but sometimes I like to do that second row. So I'm actually just going to spread it out. I mean, it's so easy. And because it's on the gathering stitch, it's almost like just on a, a rope. So you can just easily pull it out so it matches the length of your tea towel. So I'm just kind of pulling it out, separating the, it a little bit. So right there, I mean, that was just as easy. And then you just make sure your ruffles are the where you want. Now I'm gonna cut off the end here of my tea towel. So I'm dealing with a raw edge. So I'm gonna cut the seam off using my rotary cutter. And then I'm going to attach, I'm gonna pin my uh, ruffle right sides together to my tea towel. sides together and where I like to pin because I want to I want to sew above the stitches so when the ruffle shows you're not seeing any of the stitches I'm getting my last pin in it's all nicely pinned and now we're gonna get this under the sewing machine I like to use the line uh, the stitch line of the last uh, basting stitch as my guideline so I can once I flip this over you're not going to see any stitches 
or you can pull those stitches out after you sew it if you want to just go in about a half inch as well. So whatever works for you. So right sides together, all pinned up, and now we're ready to um, sew this in place and be done. I'm all set up at the sewing machine. I have my presser foot lined with that last basting stitch. So when I, you won't see that basting stitch. Um, but again, you can pull that. So now you can back stitch. So do a couple stitches. Back stitch. And carefully sew till you get to the end. Back stitch at the end. Coming to the end, make sure you back stitch. And now we're ready to cut the thread and take a look at how the project came out. Complete a tea towel and it looks fantastic. You don't see any stitches because we, when we sewed this together, we sewed above the basting stitches. You're free to pull those basting stitches if you want because you've now stitched the ruffles together so it's, it's secure, but you don't need to worry about that extra step. That's why I sew above it. So now you can embellish it if you'd like, maybe add a heat transfer vi um, vinyl monogram or embroidery, but I love it just like this. And I love that fringed edge, that frayed edge. It gives it that very cute farmhousey look. These makes great gifties or to hang anywhere in your kitchen or maybe even a guest bathroom. So this is how easy it is to make these cute little tea towels. Thank you so much for watching. If you love this video, make sure you hit the subscribe so you are notified anytime videos like this are updated. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.